Well, hey, you guys, and welcome back to Tomes of Terror, my little book review show here. So if you guys remember, back in, like, October of 2023, I think it was, I reviewed a novella called The Last Day by Sean Barber, who's actually originally uh, from Florida, but I believe he lives in Virginia now. So this book was actually sent to me as an ARC, Advanced Reader's Copy, um, by the author himself. And I ended up enjoying it very much. Like I said, if you remember the review, I'll put a link to it in the description if I remember. So not too long ago, a couple weeks back, uh, the same author, Sean Barber, sent me another message and asked if I would have a look at his latest book. So of course, uh, I accepted because I liked the first one a lot. And I always like free books. You know how that goes. So this latest one is called The Maw. And it's actually due to be uh, published on March 29th, 2024. So as of this video coming out, you can't actually pre-order it on Amazon. It will be out in a few days. So I'm going to say it's it's largely a different vibe than The Last Day. Um, I But I found myself loving this one just as much, if not more. Um, you know what I mean? Because I think, I don't know, this one had more of like my kind of thing to it, I guess. This, like The Last Day, if you'll remember, it was kind of akin to like an apocalyptic version of Groundhog Day, kind of. Whereas this one is kind of more like a coming of age tale, except filtered through like sort of small town surrealism, if that makes any sense. So in the acknowledgments at the end, uh, Sean Barber actually explained that The Maw started out as a 3,400 word short story that he sent to be published in an anthology, but they said it just kind of missed getting in there, like it was a near miss or whatever. And the editor actually gave him some feedback on it saying, well, we really liked this story, but we thought that, you know, the concept of it was great and it needed to be fleshed out. So Sean Barber actually ended up, you know, taking this advice to heart. And so he expanded the original short story out to novella length. Um, and that, I'm going to say, seemed absolutely like the right decision. Um, if anything, I think this concept could have been even a little bit longer because honestly, as I was reading it, I got so involved with the protagonist and like the weirdness of the story that I could have easily read like a story like three times longer than this, like about this concept, just because I thought it was so cool. But honestly, on the other hand, like part of me was glad that it was the length that it was. I mean, yes, this story could have been, you know, expanded upon even further, but I think there was something about just having the right amount of detail and just the right amount of depth and not a smidgen more than that. You know what I mean? I think this was exactly the right length to explore this concept. Now, obviously, because this is such a new book, when this video is going up, it's, you know, you still have to pre-order. It'll be out on March 29th, 2024. So because it's new, I'm not going to spoil the whole plot, but I will give you um, kind of a brief synopsis to sort of set the stage and get you in the mood, like if, if it sounds like something you would want to read. So the story is set in the present day. And it's told from the first person perspective of a boy named Simon, who is 14 years old at the start of the story. Um, the story comprises about a two year uh, time span, but he's 14 at the beginning. And he's kind of just on the cusp of starting high school. Now he has an older brother whose name is Freddie, who he really looks up to a lot. You know what I mean? Um, and that he's referred to as King Freddie because he's super popular and, you know, one of those guys in high school, you know, one of those cool guys that it seems like everybody likes and everybody admires, like he's everyone's friend type of thing. So in this small town where Simon and Freddie live, the main place where all the teenagers kind of hang out is this big parking lot behind an abandoned strip mall, uh, which was called the Fairgrove Shopping Center. Like, obviously, all the stores are closed now. So it seems like most nights, most weekend nights, I guess, and then like in the summer, most all of the nights, all the cool kids kind of head over to this parking lot, you know, and they all bring beers and they're smoking weed, riding their skateboards, you know, blasting music from their stereos and going off in the woods to make out, you know, just like regular teenager shit that like most people do. This is kind of set, the, the story starts out the summer before Simon is gonna start high school. So Freddie actually takes him to the lot, which is called Lot with a big L, that's what they call it, um, to kind of introduce him to everyone and essentially like initiate him into the world of the big cool kids, you know what I mean? It's that kind of thing. 
So, you know, it, Simon figures if Freddy is the king, then Simon is like the prince, you know what I mean? So when school starts in fall, he'll kind of have a head start on popularity because everyone will already know him and he'll have already hung out with all the cool kids at this parking lot, you know what I mean? So the first part of the story is just kind of sketching in the relationship between the brothers, between Freddy and Simon, kind of giving a brief mention of some of the other kids who kind of hang out at the lot and going through, like I said, it's kind of like starts out as a coming of, a coming of age type story. Like, so it's kind of cataloging like a lot of Simon's firsts that he encounters like at this place, like, you know, his first beer, his first girlfriend, his first breakup with that girlfriend, you know, and that kind of thing. So I really liked this uh, build up. Actually, I tend to like coming of age stories in horror. I've done like a lot of them recently, not on purpose, but that just kind of happened like that. And I think that this one, well, it's, I mean, it's somewhat brief because the whole story is, you know, not super long. It's just a novella, but um, it, I think it gave just enough description to get you invested in Simon's character and get a sense of what he was like before all the horror elements come crashing into the story. So these horror elements come in about 10 pages into the novella. And this is not really a spoiler because this is, you know, I, I looked at the um, at the pre-order page on Amazon and it does actually say this in the description of the book. So I'm not spoiling anything that's not already in the description that's on Amazon. So don't, so don't hate me. So one evening, Simon goes to the lot as usual, but this particular night, everybody is just kind of standing around staring at this seemingly impossible thing that has occurred. Uh, and most of them are just kind of standing around going, what the fuck, or filming it with their phones as they would. It seems that a 10 to 12 foot tall mouth, um, complete, like a realistic mouth, it's got teeth and gums and a tongue and everything. Uh, this mouth has inexplicably appeared on the back wall of one of the abandoned stores. And it's just kind of hanging out there, just wide open and completely <laughs> incongruous. No, no reason, no explanation, just a big fucking mouth there. Now, obviously nobody knows what to make of this, but you know, as most people would in this situation, they kind of start trying to like rationalize what they're seeing. And the first thing they do, which is probably the first thing most people would do, is they decide they're gonna go around to the front of the stores and like break into um, the front of the stores to see where the mouth goes because it's in the back wall. So they're assuming, oh, well maybe it goes all the way through and we can find the other side or whatever. So they go around and they break into all the stores to see if they can find the other side of the mouth. But guess what? They don't find it. But when they walk back to the back wall, the mouth is still there. But obviously, so it's kind of like, it doesn't go anywhere like inside. It's sort of interdimensional, I guess. You know what I mean? It's that kind of thing. So the first night that the kids find the mouth, and again, this mouth is also always capitalized in the story. Something um, tragic happens that I won't spoil, but it kind of spins the story off, not, not in a different direction because it's just kind of like action consequence kind of thing, but it kind of spins it off in like a more horror direction and even maybe like a more psychological horror direction, I guess. And along the way after this happens, um, Simon ends up, I guess learning some things about his brother and maybe also about himself, well, definitely also about himself, that he hadn't really realized before. That's kind of as far as I want to go with it. There's also kind of an underlying theme to the story, or at least something that I picked up on. You know, it's not like, so they don't hit you over the head with it or anything like that, but it seemed like there was a little bit of a through line of the human tendency to get quickly bored of something like of the newest thing like no matter how weird it is because there's kind of like a little bit of a subplot of like maybe a little tourist attraction type situation growing up around the mouth and it barely lasts like more than a year or two so yeah i mean i really liked uh the first novel that i read by sean barber that he sent me and i think i liked this one even better so this was like this was really great i, I enjoyed this a lot i read it just in one sitting like i just said it's not super long but you know i read it in probably like an hour and i really i think immediately i just vibed with the tone of voice of the main character and just immediately got invested in his struggles and his insecurities and just the way, I don't know, it was just really well conveyed, like, you know, this 14-year-old boy, and he's 
kind of getting integrated into the world of his cooler older brother, except there's more stuff going on that this the appearance of this mouth kind of brings to the fore. And I, and I think the mouth was like just the right touch of surrealism because, you know, it, it focused the story on its strangeness, but everything else kind of remained normal around it. And I feel like its appearance was kind of like the thing that brought to light all of the stuff that was simmering under the surface that didn't have anything to do with the mouth. You know what I mean? That So it kind of like brought everything to that. And I think that um, Sean Barber really conveyed really well like exactly what it would be like if some random mouth appeared on a wall in a small town somewhere um like what everybody's reactions would be like i think i mean because i was like obviously that's probably never going to happen maybe i'm you know um but if it did i'm like this is exactly how shit would go you know what i mean it just seemed like everything just seemed like logical and exactly how it would be now, as I mentioned, in some ways, I kind of wish the Maw was even longer because I really enjoyed like spending time in the in that world and with those characters. But then on the other hand, you know how I am with horror and I think it's always better if you under explain rather than over explain. So I feel like it was kind of better to leave it the way it was, kind of lean, kind of streamlined. You know, it, the story isn't bogged down with a bunch of unnecessary detail. There seems to be just the right amount of story here to get the gist of what's going on and even though the appearance of the mouth or what it is exactly is never really explained, I feel like it didn't need to be. Um, I think it just is. And the way that people react to it kind of comprises the main part of the story and kind of brings to light the horror of the story. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I'm going to say too that this novella, the version that he sent me, which was um, an ebook version, was I believe 62 pages, like all together. Uh, so the novella also includes like um, three, I believe three short stories at the end. Um, the first one's called Lamplight. Uh, the second one is called A Witness in Gossamer. And the third one is called Necropolis with an exclamation point. Um, of these three, um, the, the latter Necropolis was uh, the longest. And I think that was the best one. It was kind of like a monster type story kind of told from the point of the view of the monster but they're all good like i said they're they're quite short but um i really liked the the vibe of them i think he has like a good range because it seemed like all four of the stories were kind of like completely different but they were all like really good so i liked that they that those stories are in there kind of like highlighting all of the different kind of styles that he does so yeah, I mean, I really liked this a lot. I definitely think it's uh another winner from uh from Sean Barber and Honestly, um, I'd recommend it if you're really into coming of age style horror with, you know, kind of a surrealistic sort of bent to it, then you probably should read it. I think you would like it a lot. And as I said, it comes out uh, March 29th, 2024. But if you're watching this video before that, then you can pre-order it on Amazon or you can wait till it comes out, whatever uh, you want to do. But I really liked it a lot and perhaps you will too. So check it out. That will do it for this Tomes of Terror. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you guys again on the next one. Bye.